So in my last video, I looked at this 10 millihenry inductor, and we used the LCR meter, and I showed inductive kickback, which is the current going through the inductor really doesn't want to stop suddenly when you let go of the switch, let's say. And so usually you have a diode. I used an LED to allow current to keep going through the inductor, through the diode, and uh, the diode is reverse bias as far as the circuit's concerned, but it gives a path for the inductor to discharge because once you cut power, the negative side and the inductor will become positive and the positive side will become negative so all of a sudden the diode will be able to conduct. So in any case, we used the LCR meter and first thing we did was uh, we verified it was indeed 10 millihenry as you can see there because some sellers they use MH for microhenry and so this is about the size you should expect for a 10 millihenry inductor so I'm gonna yank this one out I also have this one which I have from a kit there you can see it actually has 10 mh written on it and we will plug that in there and it will automatically test it and find that it is indeed 10 millihenry so it clears once I yank this out it's live testing it so so in any case we have this little guy here and uh, this is in the micro Henry's you can see how small he is it's actually 465 micro Henry pretty small and there is one of these green ones so these kind of look like resistors they're they're really odd that confused me and because they look like resistors in fact it's showing resistance but that's 0.5 ohms very small resistance and there you can see this is a 10 micro Henry inductor but it looks like a resistor so in any case it even has most of the resistance but when you look at the colored stripes I did that before I'm not gonna do it now I saw that it was uh, 10 for a uh, 10 uh, 10 micro Henry and uh, in any case we we have uh, that going on so we will jump now to looking at other aspects using the LCR meter and so we will plug this in this is my 10 millihenry and I bought a bunch of these and because they're a fairly large value inductor and they weren't very expensive so we want to look at some other properties so it has some capacitance which is frequency dependent so first let's go to the micro to the uh, inductance reading so there we go we're looking at inductance the L and LCR stands for inductance C for capacitance and R for resistance so this is at a 1 kilohertz frequency for this particular one and we will change the frequency we can easily do that just by hitting the frequency button so now the frequency is changing 10 times faster uh, 10 kilohertz and 100 kilohertz so you can see it holds 10 millihenry pretty pretty nicely its inductance is holding pretty steady so let's go back to 1 kilohertz and look at the capacitance so 2.5 microfarad for this particular 10 millihenry inductor and at a faster frequency the capacitance goes down so inductors are basically wires they're insulated wires that you wrap in a coil and so there is other wire that is further along in the circuit that's right next to wire that is earlier on in the circuit so they can build up a charge kind of like separated plates of a capacitor uh, they will you know ultimately connect at some point but at uh, different uh, frequencies the charges build up differently so you see the capacitance changing 
So that's just kind of a, oops, I hit the wrong button. We have the uh, resistance. Let's go through that too. So, fairly high frequency there. Now, at a lower frequency, the resistance went down. It went from 100 ohms down to 25 ohms. And uh, if you watched my last video, I mentioned that I thought it was 100 ohms at 10 kilohertz. So let's go to 10 kilohertz. It's actually about 36 ohms. And uh, that's when I was going by memory. Now we get to 10 or 100 kilohertz. Now you can see we're above the 100 ohms. And uh, so this must have been what I was uh, thinking of. So uh, rapid changes in uh, current adds more resistance to the component. That makes sense. Inductors do not like rapid changes in current. So let's take a uh, resistor. So we're going to take the 220 ohm resistor. And this is just, you know, fun stuff you can do with an LCR meter. That's uh, one of the reasons why I bought it, plus its range of readings and stuff. But in any case, so this is a 200 and 20 ohm resistor it is in kilo ohms I'm not sure if I can change that or not but uh, so 0.212 kilo ohms is 212 ohms so these are cheap resistors they're supposed to be 1% uh, higher or lower or in between their their value and actually yeah this is uh, no this is off it should be about 4 higher or lower or exactly on and so this resistor is not 1% uh, accurate but in any case we got basically 212 ohms here that's at a hundred kilohertz let's change the frequency to a hundred hertz so other end of the spectrum as far as this meter is concerned and you can see it's holding 212 ohms you know it looks like there's a slight difference but uh, it's holding 212 ohms pretty well and so that's frequency let's check we can check its inductive and uh, so that's resistance again so resistors also have inductance and capacitance so that's in Henry so very little inductance but it does have some and these metal ones I think these blue ones are worse because they kind of carve a little groove in them from what I understand and it acts a little bit like an inductor but in any case it's about 0.1 micro Henry so very small that would be 136 nano Henry and uh, that's at a hundred thousand kilohertz let's lower it down and you can see the amount of inductance goes way up at slower uh, frequencies right there we can keep changing the frequency so also of course it has capacitance so these are just general properties of components charges can build up so this is at one kilohertz and it looks like nothing showing up till we get to a hundred thousand kilohertz and maybe it was my hand I don't know, we had a reading there for a little while. There we go, 100 hertz. Yeah. I don't know why it's uh, showing something for a little bit, but then clearing out. So, that is interesting. So, in any case, I uh, thought I would uh, test out the inductors, talk about them a little bit. We got sidetracked, went to a resistor, but in any case, this is a uh, 10 millihenry, and well, this one's 10 microhenry, which it uh, I don't usually see these. It just came in a kit that I have. So let us look at here's a 4.7 microhenry, and uh, come on, get out of there. There we go. I had to squeeze it out of the bag. There, there it is. And I'll plug it in. We'll see that its leads are really short. And we want to get off of capacitance. There 
and you get two inductance. There you go. So 4.6 micro Henry. There we go. 4.7. That's what it says on it. And so you can see the size difference. So if you're looking at inductors, not sure if the MH means micro Henry or milli Henry. Milli Henry is a thousand times larger than micro Henry. Compare their sizes and uh, look at uh, other ones. And the micro Henry ones are going to be cheaper for the most part, unless you get really lucky and find some cheap Milla Henry ones. So, in any case, this is just kind of a bonus video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.